Hey everybody, I just figured I'd take the time now since I have the inclination and a few moments to do it uh, to do a video that's been requested of me more than once and that is how to smooth out a nib. Now, what I'm going to do here is I've got a, a pen. Uh, this is nothing more than a cheap Bauer pen. If you've never done nib smoothing before, I would suggest you practice on inexpensive pens. That way if you really hose things up you hadn't lost anything and your learning experience will be a whole lot less. And that's kind of how I started out and learned is by doing it that way. So, um, here is uh, what I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume that if you're at the point where you're going to want to smooth out your nib that you've already checked tying alignment. So, um, I'm going to make it real simple and fast on tine alignment. That's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. But if you look on a fountain pen, you probably already know that you have uh, your nib and you have a slit down the center and you have two uh, little, uh, you have a forked tine uh, or a forked nib with a, a tine on either side. So, um, when you look at your, your nib here. What you're looking for uh, is that everything is even and aligned. So what I want you to, to imagine is you've got both of your, uh, this is, uh, these are the two tines on a nib. You want to make sure that you have a slight angle in so that they're angled sort of like this. Okay. So when they're angled like this, then you've got a channel for that ink to go down. Furthermore, you want to make sure that they are even. So the two tines come across, that they are even, that also they're even up and down. So you don't want it like this, you don't want your tines like that, because on the bottom side it can drag and scratch, and that's usually uh, the first thing to look at when you've got a bad writing nib, is that you've got some ink flow. And I'm not going to talk about how to get ink flow. Um, that's a whole nother video, like I said, for a whole nother time. So um, I'm just going to do the smoothing part. So you've got a, everything's in alignment. Uh, your ink flow should look good, but you just want to be able to smooth it out so it writes a little bit better than it does. So um, here's what I'm going to show you when you want to check time alignment, though. Just because I can. This, um, pretty much useless. It's not going to be a very effective magnifying glass because that nib is so small you're not going to be able to see it uh, very well or effectively all right then you've got ones like this magnifying glass like that they're okay if you want to take a look at um, uh, you know the, these ones I'm showing you now they're fine if you want to just take a look at what writing would be on the side of a pen or a uh, or an imprint on a nib kind of thing but they're not really effective for looking at your tine alignment okay um, you want something more like this here this uh, is a 10x uh, loop I'll pull it out here actually this is 20x on one side and 10x on the other uh, and it is basically a magnifying glass on either side this will work but that's not even the one that I, I tend to use. I tend to use a, a different one even than this. So let me put this out of the way. I tend to use uh, this one right here. Um, so it's a Belomo triplet. Um, this was what came highly recommended by professionals who do it. And I'm able to, to uh, put that basically up to my eyeball and focus from hold this up close and focus back and forth this way to be able to see what I'm doing rather than doing this I do it the opposite way hold this to the eye and check with that way so I'm not going to get into time alignment but just throwing that out for you uh, that if you want to check that make sure you've got a good magnifying glass uh, or a, a, a jeweler's loop kind of thing I've tried several different I got a headset that really stinks I, I won't buy that one again I may be able to find a nicer better one so this particular pen here I've already checked time alignment on it I'm happy with it uh, alignment looks good this pen writes but doesn't write as well as I would like it to now this particular uh, pen I think was a uh, uh, about 709 if memory serves or 79 um, I'd have to look it up I'll throw it up on the screen when I can remember this is fountain pen friendly paper 
This is paper that I use around in the house every day. I'm sitting here at my desk. I would use a notepad like this. So, um, just to show you a little bit, I mean, it writes. It skips a little bit. Like I said, I've already checked alignment. This is fountain pen friendly paper. It writes okay, but still not real smooth. And it's a medium nib. Uh, and it's not really writing like an, a medium, it writes more like a, like a fine. But the ink flow, I don't think, is the problem. So, let's set these aside. And I'm going to show you the materials that you need to do some nib smoothing. I've tried different things, uh, and some things work a little bit better than others. This was recommended. It's micro mesh. Essentially, it's a fabric that is an abrasive, sort of like sandpaper, but it's not really sandpaper. It's close, though. It's the same kind of concept. And I'll pull this, this out. It almost feels like a vinyl sheet. This is a 12,000 grit. This is what the kind of thing you want to end up with, not necessarily start with. You can see right here it's micro mesh. You can see that I've used this some in the past. But I don't use this anymore. And I'll show you why here in just a little bit. I've got another set of micro mesh. And the thing is, um, people use micro mesh like this in these sheets uh, in order to. Uh, in order to smooth out pens, not not the nibs, but the pens, and trying to polish them up. And I've tried that before, and that didn't work out all that well for me either, so I'm not going to necessarily recommend that. But I've got a couple different grits of this stuff uh, laying here around the house. Um, I, I think just two grits that are in the sheet style, and the other one is here somewhere on my desk. And then this is not the bag it came in, but you got the same kind of thing here. I've seen other people use this as well. Now, one of the funny things about working with this stuff and doing nib smoothing, that's just an old bag from uh, Cat5 Cable. But, uh, you know, I purchased this from Anderson Pens at a pen show, and it tells you what's what as far as the, the various grits. And um, I know people who will use this many or these many grits to polish a fountain pen. I know some people who use these very foam pads with a micro mesh on them in order to smooth out nibs. I've actually seen a demonstration online done using these. Now it's interesting too that there are different opinions as to whether or not to use something like this or to use a, you know something like this. Uh, one person says these are better. Another person says, well, because you don't have the padding and the springiness, you really need it to be flat in order to get a good nib smoothing. Well, I've learned that I don't use either. Um, I've known some of these things have been out for a while, and I'll show you exactly what I use. This happens to be, and I keep it in this bag. Uh, it happens to be. The supply kit I got from when I took a nib smoothing workshop at the DC Pen Show earlier this year. And I throw all my nib smoothing stuff in here. So I've got that. Um, this, I'll explain what everything is here in just a little bit. And all right. This is also some micro mesh. It's just a different brand of it. And you can see that's a 2000 grit kind of a fine. You can tell that I used that an awful lot. This was just given to me by somebody at a pen show when I bought some nibs from him. Uh, so he handed me this. He said, yeah, go ahead and use this. Take it. Um, okay, great. So I took it and I started to use that. And knowing that's like a 2000 grit. So um, what I ended up doing instead though is after taking the nib smoothing workshop, I use this. Now this is not micro mesh. This is sandpaper. And it is a 2000 grit automotive sandpaper that I picked up in my local auto parts store. 2000 grit wet or dry sandpaper to sand clear coat and, and paint finishing. So it's meant for a very fine 
stage four, it says, so it's towards the end of your uh, sanding that you would do on an automobile. Well, that's also the same kind of uh, sandpaper that was recommended uh, by Richard Bender uh, to use to start working on nibs, not finishing with, but starting on nibs. And then there's this. This is basically a buff stick, and this buff stick is nothing more than micro mesh. You've got a rough micro mesh here, a finer micro mesh there, and on the back, finer still. So, rougher, less rough, and then this. Now, my understanding is this is rougher than this, which um, this is slightly rougher than this, and then you work your way down to that. So I've had some that have been well worn. I've bought five of them at a time. Uh, they're not expensive. Depending upon from whom you get them, they can be one to two dollars. Okay, so these are my tools of the trade that I use to smooth out nibs. One other thing that I always keep here at my desk when I'm doing it too is a piece of paper towel um, or Paper, or an old napkin, let's say from Wendy's or fast food, if you had some left over. So we've already checked my nib. All right, we've already determined that you really can't see that. It, it writes okay, but not as well as I would like it. You're going to have to check on this a lot. Now I, I've seen professionals where they've got their goggles on and they're checking everything. Um, with uh, with a loop and that is not a bad practice uh, you look here you want to make sure that you have essentially a ball that is on here and with that ball that you want it to um, you know, be kind of a round thing that's the, your tipping material but it's not always necessary now here's what I'm going to tell you before I do this don't call me if you mess up a pen not my fault not my problem I'm going to show you what I do and this is not necessarily a recommendation. This is just a learning session of what I do technique that works for me. I have found techniques that I have seen different people use. I've seen people in one part of the world use a different technique than somebody uh, in another part of the country. And someone within the same country in the opposite coast have a slightly different technique. I'm just going to show you what works for me. Keep in mind, anything I show you may actually ruin any warranty that you have on a pen. The technique is going to be the same. The principle is going to be the same whether you're working on a $2 pen or uh, what I've done work on a, uh, a pen that would retail for seven to $900. i have worked on my own Mont Blanc pens. I worked on Jin Hao's, 99 cent A Hao's. Uh, Jin Hao 992s that I give away. Sometimes I'll smooth them up just a little bit. So, whether or not you're working with a heavy duty pen, expensive pen, wide nib, narrow nib, it doesn't matter. Fine nib, gold nib, steel nib, it doesn't matter. As far as I'm concerned, the technique that I'm going to show you is what I do. So, again, start out with something inexpensive that hopefully if you hose it up, you only spent a couple of dollars for a good learning experience. Do not start tackling muddy, expensive pens. I've used the same technique on Monteverdes, like I said, Mont Blancs, uh, and what I'm going to show you is what I what I would do. So I already know I got a good amount of tipping material on here. This is a fairly unused pen. I've only filled it one time, and I wasn't really happy with how it wrote, so I flushed it out and I put it in my. Uh, pen chest over here and I only got it out and inked it up just for this particular video so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out and I'm going to use just a little bit of scraping technique now the whole writing surface is not just uh, the angle at which you hold it against the paper okay you want to get the entire possibility of writing surface now you notice It'll lay ink there, it'll lay ink here, it'll lay ink on the side, on the side, it will even lay ink with reverse writing. So, you want to smooth the whole thing, trying to preserve kind of a, a circular ball. I don't check mine as often as professionals do. I'm not a professional, This is I'm just an amateur who happened to play. So, 
you notice I'm not doing the figure eight pattern like I've seen some people talk about. When I uh, took a little class from Richard Binder, one of the things that he said was that's a fallacy. It's a myth that you have to do the figure eight. He recommends that you start low and on the sides, at, at the top, and even like that angle. So let's see if we're any smoother than we were. Yeah, just a little, not enough. And I'm not done yet either. So, one, you know, whether it's straight, you're still going to get the same effect as if you had done the figure eight. Don't get me wrong, I'll still do those, but it's not a necessity. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to, what I'll do is, just yesterday working on several pens and I had one that would skip in one direction and not the other. So now that is already smoother. I can already tell that is smoother than what it was. And the reason I picked this up was I like to wipe off my sandpaper. That way I don't get ink all over me <laughs> and uh, I don't have to give up my piece of paper all that early. All this is is just a piece that was cut off from this. That's all it is. I just chopped off the end. Right, You can get little tiny squares if you want. This size is about what I'm comfortable with. So, there we go. See, now I'm just trying to get a little bit pickier about it. When I'm smoothing here, I got one direction that doesn't write a little right real well. I'm just trying to make it evenly smooth around. There we go. Slick. See that's a lot smoother than what it was. Yep. Writes fine that way. See you got a little bit of skip that way so. Let's see how we go. That's not too bad. So I'm getting to the point now where I'm about done, I think, with the sandpaper end of it. And then I'm going to move to this. I'm not even going to use the pink side because I use this instead. And this is actually rougher than this. So I'm going to essentially do some of the same. And I'm going to start on the sides. Same exact technique, a little on the sides. Start low, work my way up. So what I'm doing is I got the pen, so I'm going to angle it up a little bit as I'm doing some of the smoothing around the edges. This is not a difficult process. It's not a difficult technique at all. And I'm going to lift it up. This is not a, a uh, horrifically used pen. So I knew that I had plenty of tipping material. I knew that I wasn't going to have to worry about there not being any tipping on it, or I wasn't going to have to worry about the uh, the nib essentially being ruined before I ever go to work on it. So let's check it again. You're also you're going to constantly have to be checking as you uh, do this, and you're you're smoothing it to your taste, not somebody else's. Usually, if you're doing it for somebody else, you would ask them to write with it. Uh, but for me, that is so smooth compared to what it was. Just a little bit of work. It doesn't take long to be able to get a nice smooth pen. Now, here what I do is I start with the full length of the back. And I'll start down low with a low angle, lifting up on the pen. And then I'll angle it a little bit, roll it a little bit, get it a little on the side, roll it a little bit to the other side. Constantly lifting gradually as I scrape down the full length of this thing. 
So, now that that's been done, you probably can't tell just from what you're seeing. I can, because I'm the one holding it and writing with it. Folks, this is so smooth compared to what it was. Now I'm going to put it on fountain pen friendly paper. Now I'm just scribbling, so. Alright. You know what? I'm going to work on it just a little more because I like it to glide even more than that. It is almost there. Just almost there. Paper does make a difference for me personally. I'm not a paper snob like I know some people are and I personally like to use not necessarily Rhodia, not necessarily Tomaway River, although I do have paper like that. I do have Clairefontaine. Um, but here's the deal. For work, everyday work, I am not going to be buying highly expensive notepads just to write a shopping list, a laundry list of things to do, a honeydew list, or at work, a to-do list for the day when I'm taking notes as I'm running a process like I have been today. I am not going to sit here and you know spend some money on some highly expensive paper I like to use ordinary notebook paper I write letters for those of you who have gotten letters from me who have been a pen pal you know that I'll use a fountain pen on an ordinary uh, notepad from Staples not think anything of it and not have a problem with it so let's see if that scribbles any better than it did does just a little bit so it is not a difficult technique folks I know that this nib was in really good shape it was steel when I got it uh, fairly unused I knew it was an alignment and I knew that just a little bit of smoothing a few minutes smoothing it out with a little bit of sandpaper that you can buy for six bucks a pack uh, for probably years worth of supply sitting over here unless of course you're professional and you do it all the time I'll be honest with you folks I probably do two or three nibs a week minimum uh, because I'll get fresh pens in that I don't like the way that they, they wrote or my uh, one of my family members will come and say hey uh, this writes a little rough or um, I'll have a friend of mine who said hey my pen's not writing well can you work on it they'll give it to me I'll fix it, it'll start to write well, and then I'll just be a little disappointed with how it writes. So for them, I'll take it out and smooth it out. By the time they get it back, um, I've literally had a, a $1 pen, now writes like a $100 pen, and they're happy with it. So people have asked me uh, for my nib smoothing technique. That's all there is to it. My, here's my advice. Get yourself a little bit of paper like this. Go to AndersonPens.com or go to um, Independence.com. You'll probably have to Google them. Um, and I'll put those websites up here on the screen. Order stuff like this. Got to be honest, don't order just this because you, or you're really going to waste money just buying this and paying for shipping. So order a bunch of stuff. Uh, order some pen supplies, some ink sacks if you ever want to work on uh, old pens. Uh, get yourself some supplies. If you go to a pen show, look for these. A lot of booths are going to have these to sell. They're not expensive and they're really valuable. In essence, I wasted, in my opinion, a lot of money buying these. I probably wasted an awful lot of money as far as I am concerned with uh, buying the, the sheets like this. This was a waste of my money. Hey, just one uh, side note about these sticks like this. All right? Do not use this. This is just a nail file that I picked up for a dollar. Uh, they sell them at you know, dollar stores. I think we picked this up at a Kmart in a pack of three. Um, this 
this very gritty, very coarse sandpaperish meant for nails. I do use these on pens, just not for nib smoothing. It is not micro mesh, and it is not the uh, the nice automotive wet dry sandpaper. So do not use this for nib smoothing, and you're probably going to ruin a pen by doing it. So I just wanted to throw that out there for you too. Some professionals use a mylar sheet at the end, and um, I got to be honest. In my opinion. I've seen very little, and I was told that my uh, technique wasn't the best on doing this, but what they would do is just like a one micron sheet of mylar to help finish it off. I have never had that mylar do much for me, to be honest with you. It's it's hasn't really contributed a whole lot to how a pen wrote for me. Um, sometimes I'll do it, sometimes I won't, just out of curiosity, uh, because you can see, yeah, I've I've tried it some, uh, but it really didn't make a difference between here and here. But like I said, the bottom line is, I'm willing to use this pen now and put it back into my rotation because before it wrote so horribly I did not want to use it I just flushed it out put it in my drawer and I've done so many pens here lately I keep saying I, I wish I had just recorded it while I did it so I figured while I have the time today I'd go ahead and record this so now I've got a pen that's back in my collection or back in my rotation that I know writes well and I will be happy with it so I call this the Trojan Technique why? Because my name is Troy. Trojan just means of and referring to Troy or from Troy. So, All right. Bottom line, folks, it's not hard. It's really not. You just learn by doing. Do it. Learn it. That's how, that's how I did it. I, yeah, I took a seminar, and I took um, a little bit of what he had. I took some from, some from other people, plus I took from my own experience, and this is what I got. Enjoy it. Practice. It's not hard. It's not expensive. If I can do it, you can do it.